My friends, we're living in an age when people have such strange idea about what's right and what's wrong. In fact, a great many people are wondering if there is a principle right and a principle wrong. You know, all this modern talk about not believing in hell is because people have quit believing in sin. You know, when I grew up, everybody in my country knew that sin was such a terrible thing. If it wasn't a hell, there ought to be a hell. I remember when I was a little country boy, I used to slip out in the woods and pray. And I'd tell God if I wasn't too big a sinner, I wish he would save me. Nobody had to argue with me about whether there's a place of future punishment or not. I knew there must be some kind of a place for bad folks in eternity. I knew that when I was a little boy. I've seen 10,000 hells produced by sin on this earth. I know there must be a hell. Uh, you know, I've been up and down the land and, and I've seen so many things and so many people. And I've noticed that sin always produces hell on this earth. I've been to the home of the rich man and listened for my footfalls on his carpet floors and looked at his beautiful pictures on magnificent walls. And I've sat beneath his gorgeous chandeliers of trembling crystal, raising the walls like bouquets of diamonds. And then I've sometimes found that I was in the home of a sinner. And I've been out on the street corner and I've seen a poor, struggling, hard-working man that was going home with his money just scarcely enough to buy food where a wife was waiting for him in a little cabin somewhere. And maybe that man was a Christian. And I've said to myself, there sure must be two places in eternity. This thing's got, this thing's got to be even up somewhere. It isn't even now. I know it's a hell. Some kind. You know, I know what a terrible thing sin is because when Jesus Christ died on the cross, according to the teaching of the Bible, which I believe, and all evangelical Christians believe, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, our sins were laid upon him and he bowed his head and died. And if our sins nailed Christ to a cross and he couldn't bear our sins and not die, we can't bear them without being lost and damned in hell. I believe all that. But, you know, we get such a strange idea about sin today. You know, people say, well, I don't think this is so bad. Or, you know, you think this is wrong? If you ask about whether things right or not, you better not do it. You know, sin is anything that you do that you ought not to do. And it's anything that you leave undone that you ought to do. When I was a country boy, they used to pray those prayers. They'd say, uh, forgive us of our sins of omission and commission. They say we've done those things we shouldn't have done and left undone the things we should have done. Well, anything that you ought to do and don't do it, that's a sin. And anything that you do that you ought not to do is a sin. Now, of course, there may be degrees in sinning and degrees in the consequences of the fall of sinning. But, you know, uh, anything that you ought to do that you don't do is a sin. And if you ought to do something and don't do the best you can, the thing you ought to do, you sin. Anything short of your best is a sin. If you're going to sing in church and don't sing the best you can, it's, it's a sin. If you don't do the best job you can, because uh, you uh, are supposed to do the best job you can if you're a Christian, it's a sin. Anything that uh, keeps you from shooting the bullseye, hitting the bullseye when you shoot for God's a sin. Anything that makes you miss the mark's a sin. Anything. Anything that reduces your efficiency is a sin. Anything that limits you and keeps you from reaching the highest place possible is a sin. Therefore, it's a sin not to be a Christian. You know, uh, the sin of rejecting Christ is, is the sin of all sins. Jesus Christ is God's divinely appointed and divinely anointed king. Jesus is God's heir to all things. And you're guilty of high treason when you reject him. If you reject Jesus Christ, you are sinning against God. You know, the Bible makes that very strong. I didn't write the Bible. I'm just telling you what it says. The Bible says, He that believeth not shall be damned. Not to believe in Christ is to sin. Why, people say it doesn't make difference what I believe. It certainly does. You know, a heathen woman's conscience hurts her if she doesn't sacrifice her baby to a false god. Your conscience hurts you if you did sacrifice your baby to a false god. The difference between you and a heathen woman is not a difference so much of a conscience, it's a difference of creed. You believe one thing, she believes another thing. Your whole conduct in your whole life is regulated by what you believe. If you believe you ought to go to church and don't go to church, your conscience hurts you. If you believe you ought to read your Bible and don't read your Bible, your conscience hurts you. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you believe that sincerely. 
and he died to save you, and you reject him as your Savior, then you feel guilty because you rejected the Son of God. If you believe that Jesus Christ was just a man, like anybody else, you'll treat him like a man. But some of us know that he was God, and God manifested in the flesh. You remember a young man came to him and said, Good master, and he said, What do you call me good for? He said, There's only one that's good, and that's God. In other words, he said, If I'm not God, I'm not good. If he wasn't God, he wasn't good. You have no right to call him good if he wasn't God. That's the way a Christian feels about it. So we say, My Lord and my God, when we're talking to Jesus. He's our God. He was God manifest in the flesh. He said, He and the Father are one. Well, we believe that. That's the reason we trust him. That's the reason we stand for him. Now, we believe that that kind of faith is essential to do, living the right kind of life. We do not believe anybody can be good until he's properly related to God. And we believe your proper relation to God comes by being properly related to Jesus Christ. As many received him, to them gave you the right to become children of God, even that believe on his name. It's a sin to disobey God. It's a sin to to violate the Ten Commandments. It's a sin to do this, but you know, the trouble with the world is not so much uh, sins, it's sin. As I've said so many times, sins are the limbs on the tree of sin. As long as there's a tree of sin there, there'll be some limbs on that tree, some branches. Now, the trouble with the world is sin. Sin. No man can do his best in any particular as long as a life is in sin, in the tree of sin. Now, there's a new life that God puts in the man, regenerating life. We read in the Bible, he'd have the son, have life. If I have Christ, I have life. There's just one difference between a sinner and a Christian, just one. A Christian has Christ, a sinner hasn't. That's a difference. That's the only difference. But that sure is a big difference. It's a difference between light and darkness. It's a difference between right and wrong. It's a difference between heaven and hell. You're rejecting Jesus Christ. You're doing something terrible. You ought not to do it. It's a sin. You will never be at your best until you get right with him. You will never have the right kind of life until you get that life properly related to the Son of God who died on the cross to save you. Now, some of you listening to me have accepted Christ as your Savior. Now, what you ought to do is to go out in his strength and name and do everything you can the best you can. We tell our students in Bob Jones University that there's no difference between the secular and the sacred. We say everything's sacred if you're a Christian. Dusting the room, getting your lesson, uh, washing the dishes if you cook. Whatever you do, doesn't matter what it is, it's sacred. People say, well, he's called to preach. He has a sacred calling. Well, if you're a Christian, you have a sacred calling too. You know, there's no more sacred calling than the calling of a mother. You ought to be the best mother you can. If you're not the best mother you can be, you're sinning against God. If you don't bring, do your best to bring up your children and nurture an admonition of the Lord, then you are sinning against God just as much as I would sin against God when I stand up in the pulpit and don't preach the best I can. Now, if you're a father, you're sinning against God. Every day you live, you don't do your best as a father. If you have a job and you don't do your best in that job, the best you can do, you're sinning against God. If you're a Christian, a Christian's supposed to do his best. You're a servant of Jesus Christ. Whatever a Christian does, he's supposed to be doing for the Lord. You're not working for some man if you're a Christian. You're working for God Almighty. And you ought to be good and true and faithful in your job. You ought to do the best you can. That's the sort of challenge we give our students in Bob Jones University. Over and over again, we drill it into them in chapel, in the classroom, everywhere. Do the best you can. Don't hand in a paper that isn't the best you can produce. If you do the best you can, in God's sight, you're as great as anybody else. The best you can do puts you in a position where you're just as wonderful in God's sight as the greatest genius that ever lived. Remember, the measure of your responsibility is not only a measure of your opportunity, it's a measure of your ability. You can do better than somebody else, maybe. Maybe you can't do as well as somebody else, but do the best you can. I've said so many times, let me say it again. The biggest light in your home and the best light in your home is not the chandelier in the parlor. It's a back hall light. That little light that you don't notice much, but it's there all the time shining at night. So you be a good back hall light for God. 
do the best you can wherever God puts you, and everything will be all right. Anything short of your best, remember, is a sin. Our Father, help us to remember it, all of us. It's easy to forget that. We're inclined to be slow and lazy and drift along. Help us all from this moment henceforward to do our dead level best for God and to be faithful to Him in everything. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.